Okay, everybody, and welcome to Podtacular's Take on E3, our new little segment we got going here. And this week, we're going to be commenting on E3, and specifically the Halo portion of E3. Since you know this is a Halo podcast, why talk about Crackdown 2? Why talk about MAG? I mean, who wants to know about that when you're on a Halo podcast? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, make a, you make a great point there. <laughs> but anyway, um, on this week, if you haven't noticed, we have the Bizzle. Mr. JVB, the ex Hola. Hola. <laughs> the, uh, the, the the guy that people have said that G. Lewis is the new JVB, and I greatly appreciate it. How you doing, oh, JVB? Thank, you, thank you. You know, that's a big insult. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh wow! For him or for you? <laughs> hey, I, I I couldn't I couldn't help that one. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Anyway, anyway, we, we got JVB and we got Dust Storm as always, and uh, we have a new new person. She hasn't been on in like a year, not since JVB was hosting. Uh, Lady Luck from Gamertag Radio and DS. I believe you're still part of DSO, correct? Yes, I am. Yeah, that I is am. Not, you have Lady Luck. I, I almost corrected you, G. Lewis, and said, "No, not DSO, DSI." <laughs> 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 and we all just be like, JVB, you're an idiot. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's yeah. nothing new, though. <laughs> it's a console. It's not a, it's not a handheld. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, so we did We did have uh, me and Fumo Jive when we did the first Community Vibes. We interviewed Lady Luck because they won the Halo tournament that was going on there. Oh, yeah. I heard about it was an all-girl team. No, actually, she was in second place. Oh, okay. Second yeah, I took second. Uh, James beat me by, like, the grudge match of two kills. So, <laughs> could you beat yep. Golden Girl? Could you beat Golden Girl? You think of Halo Three? I don't know. Maybe when I was playing my best and I played it regularly, but now cool. I hardly touched. <laughs> well, anyway, let's, let's get on. Let's get on the show here. Let's start off with uh, Lady Luck, since we're doing ladies first. You know, we're trying to be gentlemanly here on Podtech. Why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are, what, what you're doing, where you're from, and all that, all that good stuff. Oh, yeah, that'd be, I guess, intro would work since most of everybody doesn't know me. Um, I'm in college. I've been gaming for way too long. <laughs> Catchphrase <laughs> there. Um, yeah. At least for me. Um, I've had, I got Halo 1 and the original Xbox when it came out. And I've been playing since then. I went to both of the Midnight Madness for Halo 2 and Halo 3. Um, been to MLG. He's been in clans for the past four years. Um been around on Gamertag Radio for a few years, and then, you know, after talking with JVB and stuff, that ended up over on Potacular for a bit. And so now I work over on Gamertag Radio. I co-host on the show and also, you know, help with news and write-ups and junk. And just right now, gaming whenever I have time. What what, so. what, what games would you say? I know you were playing Halo 3 before you signed on, but what games are you into lately? Um... I've really gotten stuck on racing and sports games. Yeah, I, I've been really getting into Keep racing games myself. But anyway, next, next up we got here is JVB. He needs no introduction. Uh, why don't you let everybody know what you've been doing since your last time on Podtacular? Well, the last time I was uh, in Podtacular, we were talking about Fumo Jive's folding bike. So yes. that, was, that was a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> um, same thing. Uh, doing my community management work. We're talking about games, uh, doing local events with SFX360 and Gamertag Radio. You know, when, every, whenever there's something down here, we all we all work together anyway. And it's Structoid as well. I'm so jealous of hearing about everything that happens in South Florida. You know, I'm living <laughs> eight hours away and nothing hey, happens in Atlanta. You have no excuse not to drive down. <laughs> it's only eight hours. I mean, yeah, come yes. on. Gas prices? I'm in college. <laughs> Mandy, you should know above everybody else how much how much money it takes. That's very true. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I would like to try though, maybe once coming down for like a vibes or something. But, but anyway, what's, what's going on? JVB, what else you been up to? Just uh, like I said, doing my community management stuff, for talking about games.com, and right now I'm, I'm trying to enjoy all the good games that are out. Uh, on Xbox, I'm actually enjoying One vs. 100 a lot with the family. And on the PlayStation 3, I've been enjoying a lot of Kills on 2. Something I've, I've always wanted to ask you, but never got around to it. Can you, can you, can you tell me about, um, your, 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 uh, April Fool's joke about being the new Major Nelson of Sony? Can you say how that idea came from? <laughs> oh, wow. That, that <laughs> Wait, was I haven't heard this one either. Ago, huh? Uh, I've... one day I decided it was on a, on a Friday, I believe. 
I decided to play a prank before driving to Orlando. I was actually going to meet Fumo Jive. And I put down on the Pontacular forums that I was going to get a job with Sony and I was going to be their version of Major Nelson. And <laughs> one of the one of the demands was that I had to be uh, purely Sony products. You know, everything I, I talked about had to be strictly Sony. So I said I couldn't do Pontacular because it was based off of an Xbox 360 game. And so I drove to, to Orlando, met up with Fumo, told them what I was doing. And then I look in the forums and, and there was like this, uh, a few pages long of like, uh, you know, Hey, congratulations. All that's crap. How can they do that? Some blah, people blah. thought it was a fake. Some people did that, but I thought, I thought it was pretty fun. A lot of people, a lot of, I, and I felt bad. I felt really bad because a lot of people were like, your grandmother would have been proud of you. You know, she had passed away not too long ago, you know, <laughs> before that, uh, not too much. Yeah. So Nelson Rodriguez called me and he goes, I heard, you know, from one of my forum members that you were working with Sony. And I'm like, holy crap, dude, that's a joke. <laughs> so by, by the time I got home Monday, they had like over 3000 views or something and like 300 comments and people were like i hope this is an april fool's joke finally i i did admit to it and uh there was so many uh responses afterwards that my apology got lost so people thought it was still real for probably a week <laughs> afterwards <laughs> yeah yeah i wasn't too proud of that one because I, I did feel bad <laughs> just to, just to clear the air jvb is not even though i think he, he would do a great job he's currently not the major nelson of some no 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 i'm not i'm the uh I'm the major Nelson of uh, my toilet. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> and, now coming, and, and now coming live from JVB's bathroom. <laughs> hey, everybody. Well, this is JVB. Hey, as long as you don't drop your iPod in there, like we've had a few listeners write in saying that the show's been so funny that they've been dropping their iPods <laughs> in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. As long as you're not doing that. Anyway, so <laughs> let's, let's, let's get started here with uh, what, what went down at E3. Of course, the two big announcements were um, Halo to, 3 ODST? Yeah, yeah three, <laughs> Halo 3 ODST. Sorry, I just got a piece of mail from my from the, from the G. Lewis residence. <laughs> it, um, and, and, uh, and Halo Reach, which was a, uh, I think came out of left field personally, but uh, first off, We'll start off with Halo 3 ODST, and uh, let's see what everybody thought about you know the, uh, the the gameplay first. I thought it was very impressive. It looked Halo 3, but it looked like a new take on Halo 3. So, uh, Lady Luck, I know you've been we've been talking on Twitter and then on various other places. You said that you're kind of haloed out. Did uh, this, this, <laughs> is is this new Halo 3 perspective may might bring you back to Halo 3 a little more often? Um, it might. I, I don't really see the uh, the multiplayer changing much since it the impression that they gave everyone was just you know the campaign and then the addition of three more maps. Um, though I'm excited because they did tell me that one of those maps is going to be a midship remake. So oh, oh, oh that'll be awesome. Yeah, it, they, they they said it will be an inspired remake, kind of like Guardian on Lockout. So it won't be. Exactly. Won't be exactly, but it's just good. It'll, it'll probably be like a the blackout of midship. I mean, not uh, I mean the blackout of lockout. Sorry. Well, the, yeah. I hope not. This blackout's terrible. <laughs> well, I just, I mean, it, it made me happy because I feel like Halo needs more smaller maps, or Halo Three at least. Um, it has a lot of potential. I was very impressed with um their their take on how to do a story mode. Um, the idea that you, you know, you go through and you fight as a person and, you know, you work through that kind of story and then you'll pick up items that'll be marked differently and those will suck you into a different part of the storyline and, you know, help you build up into what's been going on and what happened, um, which, you know, I love stories. So I'm very excited that I will buy it just for the fact that I want to play through the campaign. Now, um, now here's 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 the big question. I heard you over on Camera Tag Radio saying uh, a big difference between Microsoft and Sony was presentation. So uh, how was the presentation of Halo 3 ODST? Did it catch your eye? You actually being sitting there 
it, uh, was it was it impressive and how they how they showed it in the presentation of it? It was, um, you know, because they, they gave a, a brief trailer and then the demo, and the demo they showed you is actually different from what you played on the show floor. So you got two different tastes. Um, their demo was a brief section of the campaign, and you got to see how it interact, running around, you know, shooting, playing going up to an item and being, hey, what's that, picking it up, and getting sucked into a different person for a different part of the story. And um, just the way that they worked it together, that, you know, you would watch the trailer, you'd see the demo campaign, and then they'd tell you, oh, well, this is what you'll be trying on the floor. It made it be like, oh, so they're doing it differently now. You know, it's it has Halo 3 attached to it, but it's not Halo 3. That's a good way to say it. JVB, what do you... Uh... You being a big Halo Halo nut since probably day one of, of Podtac, or what do you what, what what did you first think watching it? I'm assuming you you've seen the gameplay already, correct? Yes, correct. What do you uh, uh, think about it? Well, I, I pretty much knew what to expect as far as art direction. I knew that it, it, there was no way it was going to top the visuals that we see now on Halo Three because it's using the same engine. Yeah. Uh, the fact that it's in New Mimbosa, definitely gives them a platform to create a new art direction uh, so that so that both of them, you know, so that neither one of them are compared to the two. Like, oh, this doesn't look better than Halo 3 or whatever. Yeah. But the fact that, um, you know, for since Halo 2, people have been complaining that they wanted more story in New Mamboza. Well, here it is. But it's not, not through the eyes of Master Chief. It's through the eyes of an ODST rookie. And to be honest, um, I'm not haloed out. I can never be haloed out. <laughs> Thing is, it seems more like they're experimenting with uh, something that will, and, and this will tie into Reach, you know, my retarded theory. They're experimenting with this game yeah. to see a new different type of gameplay, that, especially online, that we might be seeing in Reach. Ooh. And I'm, I'm all for it. I'm all for it, you know, trying to you know, I, I saw a lot of complaints, uh, people calling it Halo 3.5, and what's the big deal between an ODST and a and a Spartan? So I had to throw in, you know, my my two senses in there, and from what I heard, the gameplay is going to be different. Hopefully, it's different enough to 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 want me to play it all the time. Yeah, yeah, but you not know, the same. Thing. You know, don't 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 change it up too much. But you know. And enough. Yeah, well, the thing that's is the, the 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 part that really disappoints me the most, obviously, is the price. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sixty dollars is still a little too rough. To I mean, I can't just forget about that. That's that surprised the hell out of me. I, I assumed it was going to be twenty bucks. Well, we we'll, made it seem like an add-on. We're going to be talking about that in full detail later on in the uh, in the ODST segment coming on here. And uh, let's move on to to, to Dust Storm. Dust Storm, what, what do you think about? ODST, of course, your big Halo nut. Yeah. No, nothing else needs to be said. <laughs> um, uh-huh. Well, I really like the. I don't know. I've, I'm whenever for people who know me in Halo, I I really like the storyline that Halo presents, and I think what Bungie's doing with ODST is is really opening up the storyline. Um, for those that, that read the books. Uh, you know that the first book was before the first Halo game. The second book was during the first Halo game. And then the third book was in between one and two. And there was really no books that really filled in anything after that until you got to uh, the Ghost of Onyx. Yeah. So I think um, the fact that Bungie's opening up New Mombasa as as more story is, is just a thrill to me. Because that, that's more information on... Not necessarily what's what's going on with Halo and the Covenant, but what's taking place on Earth before Halo Three that you didn't get to see while you were away as the Master Chief. So I think a lot of that um, for the hardcore Halo fans that that really enjoy the storyline, I think that's really going to enhance the experience for them. Um, for people who play um, multiplayer. I think Firefight is, from what I saw with the demos and all the 
um, the playing from the Bungie employees, it, it seems like that's going to be a really popular uh, new multiplayer feature that everyone's just going to enjoy. Is you just drop down and just fight a bunch of Covenant. And I think uh, people have been asking for an AI like in multiplayer. So I think it, it's a good compensation on Bungie's part as it's multiplayer in the term of you have all your, you can get up to f- three friends and go in and bash at it, but you still don't have that where it's, it's two opposing teams and you're going objective. So it, I think it's a good balance in there. So yeah. I think, I think fans that want the AI will either really enjoy it or think that it's a cop out on Bungie's part. So what's the, we'll what's, see how that works. Dustin, what's the biggest thing you're looking forward to? Um, the thing I'm looking forward to is that the Halo games have always been in a linear fashion. So I'm really looking forward to how Bungie's going to implement the new open world uh, view that ODST is going to bring. Um, I haven't played Marathon, so I don't know what those games are like, but from from the Halo games, it's always been a linear storyline, and you can only follow one path, and now you've got multiple paths to follow, so you can kind of go through campaign and play it differently every time. Um, so, I mean, it's not like it's the the game changes necessarily based on the scenario, but you still have options instead of only having to go one way. So that's what I'm really looking forward to in ODST is, is the open world. Yeah, uh, Firefight I'm also looking forward yeah, to. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. I would love to play. That's one thing I think we talked about a long time ago when Halo 3 first came out. We were missing uh, like a multiplayer aspect that was was more for just people playing against the AI rather than playing against other people. Because if if if, if you're not good at Halo, um, it's it's very frustrating to play Halo multiplayer, so I've heard. Um, <laughs> Duststorm, you want to elaborate on that? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, no, Lady <laughs> Luck, you... <laughs> uh, Lady Luck, uh, were you able to play Firefight? Yes. I sat in line for an hour and a half. Was it worth spent... it? Can you explain what, what you experienced? Um, so basically, they explained it to us that when you play Firefight, it's almost like playing Horde in Gears in that you have – it goes through kind of like rounds of enemies showing up without so much of the stopping in between. And you're limited in that you'll only get a certain number of lives for the entire group. And that, you know, as you pass through a round, you can gain an extra life for everyone. Um, But in interest of time and everybody getting to test it out, you know, on the show floor, they basically gave you unlimited lives and you played for 10 minutes. Nice. And it was an experience um, because you got to really test out the difference that you would see between what was Halo 3 as the Master Chief and what would be ODST as, you know, ODST as Marines, you know, who, who don't have the, the same capabilities. Um, you go from having the shield and your health to having stamina and health. And it's kind of like a flashback to Halo 1 where you have a health bar and you can run around and pick up health packs and get your health back. Yeah. And there is fall yeah. damage, correct? Yes, there's fall damage. Actually, um, that was my biggest problem in in the map that they gave us. <laughs> It was several levels, and the enemies will, you know, appear in different areas of it. So it was very easy to be, you know, all the way up top and have them appear in the middle. And so you'd be like, oh, it's nothing, you know, I'm Master Chief, I have shields. And you jump off, and then you'd land on the bottom and be like, crap, there goes all my stamina. Oh, That's never good. <laughs> but it, so, it, it, is a, it is a nice kind of, not, I wouldn't say 100% new, but uh, I would say new to Halo 3 and uh, maybe a, like a revamp from more like Halo One. I wouldn't just say call it new, but let's let's uh, let's. Yeah, move I was on. gonna I was gonna say it felt like uh, it sounds almost like a revamp of Halo One, or with what, it coming on top. What Halo Three would have been if we would have kept the uh, Halo One style. Keep going. Um, <laughs> anyway, we got a, we got a few new things that were announced about Halo ODST from the event, specifically <laughs> two new weapons. Uh, I I think both these two weapons we probably won't see them in multiplayer other than firefight, but it would be very nice to see them. But uh, up first, up first, let's have Duststorm tell us about the new pistol. Why don't you go ahead and tell us? Okay. 
so for diehard Halo 1 fans, uh, Bungie made pretty much the announcement that they have the old Halo 1 pistol back. Um, as, as they showed in the demo, it's, you, you shoot as fast as you can. Um, one shot, headshots, uh, will take oh, out most enemies. I think it's only on grunts, but we might. Well, grunts see. and, grunts and jackals. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. brutes, brutes you're gonna have to shoot a couple, but it's, it's pretty much shoots as fast as you can, kind of like Halo, the Halo 1 pistol. And it's also silenced, uh, the SMG, which someone else is gonna get onto that later. But for the people who really love the Halo 1 pistol, um, you're probably gonna really like what Bungie's bringing back to this. And I don't see this really coming into, uh, matchmaking at all, at least for Halo 3 matchmaking, cause. You don't think so? No, um, just because how the gameplay is right now, and I don't think it would necessarily balance out. It overpowered. Yeah, I think it's, I think for how Bungie developed Halo 3 matchmaking, it, it would, it wouldn't balance out with any of the other weapons. So maybe the, I could see the Silence SMG making a possible appearance, but, um, as you've seen with all the new maps that they released, they haven't released any new weapons yet, so that's kind of making me think that they're probably not going to release any new weapons for Halo 3 matchmaking at all. At least that's how I see it. <clears throat> yeah, so I think that this was, this was probably Bungie's last hurrah with um, with Halo 3. I think the pistol's cool, but I I don't think we'll see any of these new weapons in, in the actual... Uh, Multiplayer experience, but it is on two different discs. And I I highly doubt that we'll see it. Uh, yeah. GB, no, it'll maybe, be in firefight. Yeah, but, it will be, but, yeah. but but not but not like MLG style. No. So. Uh, Manny, JVB, you guys have anything to say about the pistol? Anything? Um, I thought it was awesome because uh, I think of all the games, Halo One was probably my favorite, and especially for the pistol, it is very powerful. I mean, I. When I played the game, you know, it was like, oh, SMG, because that's your primary weapon when you started, when you tested it at E3. But I was just like, you know, pistol the entire time. I think nice. it ended up with like 20-something headshots for it. So. Did it play well? Did it play well? Yes. I, I did like how they ran through the system with the pistol. Nice. So. Uh, another new weapon they announced was an SMG, but it was silenced. And like the new pistol, you could also zoom in with. I guess it's an ODS thing that you can probably zoom in with every weapon with their with their HUD. But uh, the Silence SMG, they said on the Bunchy podcasts, they said that it's more powerful than the pistol if you learn how to use it correctly. Um, I hmm. haven't played it, so I, yeah. guess, I guess we'll see how it goes because the rapid fire and it actually shoots pretty long range. It's not just short range anymore. From what they said, I haven't played it yet. And uh, by watching gameplay, it's like it's too far. It looks like it's far enough to be able to be mm-hmm. scoped in, but it's more or less just um, silenced SMG. I mean, that's pretty much it. Besides everything I've already explained about it, I think it'll bring a new thing for the ODST since they will not be able to dual wield. And uh, they, they I, be, I, I don't know if they confirmed it, but they, they had mentioned before that there will be no battle rifle or assault rifle in this game. Um, right. As far as I understand... Um, I on, think the top, on the topic of battle rifles, uh, I, I was looking around before we started recording at a couple other forums, and there was a lot of concern about the pistol being kind of like the BR replacement for Halo ODST. What do you guys think about that? Um, well, I mean, of course, they shoot him in the head. So, that, that I mean, you know... It's do, do you think it's like a battle rifle equivalent, or... Do you think it's it's different enough to not not necessarily be considered a battle rifle? Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, of course, it doesn't do with three shots, and I would have to see how you know, like four or five shots will kill a brute. I'll have to see how many pistol shots will kill a brute. But um, from looking at it, it, looks it looks fairly similar, and they call it the auto mag, or from what I've been hearing on the Bungie podcast. So uh, it is automatic. You can do is just hold it down, and it just sprays. Boom, 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 you know what I'm saying? It shoots pretty fast, so you guys can tell if you were watching any of the uh, gameplay. But uh, I want to know, if, I want to say call it, and I, uh, maybe from a gameplay perspective, but just understanding what a pistol and a battle rifle difference is, it's probably not the same exact thing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. It's, it's got the get the horse bullet in it, or what, what they used to say the old pistol used to have. And 
Battle, <laughs> battle rifle is just just a big gun. Uh, but anyway, uh, what, do you, what do you guys think? Uh, I'll, I'll start with JVB. Do you think there'll be any other new weapons? Because they 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 had hinted at that this won't be the only weapons that'll that'll be in there. Do you think they'll be seeing anything else? Maybe a smaller rocket launcher or something. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. I I didn't see any type of rocket launcher. I saw the laser. Yeah, laser Can cannon. Launcher. Yeah, oh. so wonder if there there would be some smaller version of a rocket launcher or grenade launcher, like Blady looks at. Yeah, look at that. that's, that's, that's the only thing that I could I could guess. But they said nothing will be dual wielded. I don't I don't know if that means you can't pick up plasma pistols or you can't pick up two of them. They, 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 could, could you pick up the enemy's weapons while you're playing Lady Luck? Um, you could. They had it very limited in that. I think. Let me rephrase. I don't want to say limited. The only specific weapons, as far as I know, were showing up, and. They, you know, were just basically like, oh, well, these new ones we're showing you here are what we're going to be showing you for now. So it wasn't a straight up yes, they'll have other weapons or no, they won't. Yeah. Um, Because I know that I actually picked up, I held on to the pistol and picked up a fuel rod cannon for any of you that might have remembered that and just kind of ran around with one of those. (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuel World Cannon is uh is in Halo. You can't you can't pick that you can't put that in multiplayer, I believe, on Forge. If I am No. Uh, I think it was only you could pick it up in campaign. Yeah. Kinda I like, think I no, there there are a couple maps that you can put it on. Oh there are. Sandbox is one of them. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well I don't have Mythic, so I guess that would be one of the things I can do. But it's uh, on Foundry too. Again, I'm, I'm dumb. Uh, <laughs> um, well, that's cool. Seeing these two weapons will definitely bring some new stuff to. I mean, it's you won't be a Spartan. They say you you'll be shorter, you'll be weaker. I mean, uh, I don't. It, Obviously, by watching the you game, won't play, to, you won't be able to dual wield either. It. it well, the, it's just. That's what I've heard. It, it's different. To I mean, from what I could tell, you couldn't pick up any of the weapons you normally would deal dual wield. I could not pick up as two at a time when I was playing, but I, you know, I can't guarantee that. Obviously. Well, they they had said already that there won't be dual wieldable weapons. So okay. They they, they had uh, announced that. Uh, I I believe a, a a while ago when they were talking about how you'll be from a different perspective. Anyway, let's go let's go on to that. Let's go on to that next. We got a uh, Halo universe is definitely changing. Two thousand nine has been the <laughs> new perspective year on the Halo universe. First with Halo Wars, now with ODST. Do you guys think that um, Bungie's trying to milk this thing, and Microsoft's trying to milk this thing, or is it, or is it, are you, are you guys interested in this? Actually, JVB, why don't you start it out and tell us what you think? Well, I remember stating a long time ago that I felt that the Halo universe had the potential to go many different routes, a la Star Trek or Star Wars, where they can make so many different side quests with with all the characters that you see in the novels. And apparently, as we talk about Reach a little later on, they're doing so. So there's there's there, there's always been that potential of milking the franchise. It's a, it's a successful one. So why not milk it for what it's worth? All I, all I know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'll accept uh, what we see with ODST, but Reach needs to, I mean, if it's not, Kills on two quality and visuals, and I mean, I, I I'd be highly pissed off to put it nicely. I was, I was listening. I believe it was the post game report where they were talking about uh, your, your show, the one where they announced all the new guest host thing. Where they were talking about how I believe it was that one. I'm probably wrong. I listen to a lot of podcasts, but um, did you guys talk about <laughs> how you would be happy with a game if they just came out with the same visuals, the same stuff, but just new campaigns, new weapons like that? Was was would you guys – I mean, Halo's been doing that for – I mean, it changes a little bit. Gameplay is obviously not exactly the same about with the with the health meter in, in Halo 3 that's really random. You don't exactly know when you're going to die, really. There's no certain <laughs> health meter. Uh, uh, well, the one, thing, the, the one thing that it, that has always been connected to the Halo franchise, it's its gameplay. The controls are smooth. Is the, uh, to me – uh, online, there's no other control scheme. Uh, just the feel of it. It none of the other games compare. Yeah. Not Call of Duty, not World at War, Killzone 2. None of them. But so that's always going to be there. That foundation. I mean, they created a great scheme. A great, you know, the, the feel of it, it just works. But uh, nowadays, 
you see franchises stepping it up. I mean, look at Call of Duty 4. Obviously, it came out later than Halo 3. So, obviously, it was going to have a graphical edge. But we need to see more now. You know, and Bungie, Bungie can do it. So, I have faith in them. What do you think about the, the actual new perspective, though, about... Uh, I was reading about how grunts and jackals and brutes look a lot bigger. Uh, I guess Lee Luckwood would know this from a better perspective. She's either playing it. They, they, they look bigger in the game. Do you think that would uh, add a new perspective just to let you know how you know frail the humans were compared to the, the Covenant? Well, I mean, yeah, other than Master Chief, of course. I definitely that- think it does because the game play, like, it still has all the basic elements of being Halo, but you notice right away the difference is that you're not the Master Chief. And by changing the perspectives of the size and maybe to an extent a little bit the look and and how dangerous they are of the enemies, you're making it much more obvious that you aren't the Master Chief, that you only have, you know, minimal armor and a health bar, and that there's only so much you can do before you die. So you definitely have that thing where you're like, crap, I'm not the Master Chief anymore, and you have to think a lot harder and play differently to an extent to get the same results. So making those changes can definitely, you know, affect how you play the game. Awesome. Uh, do you like the open world aspect? Remember, Duststorm touched on this, but uh, I know a lot of people, I've been listening to other podcasts, and they're saying that open world, they're tired of lugging between two different parts of the map and like Bungie even said that uh, you don't. There's no sequence. You can you can go to this guy over here and go to this guy way over here, and uh, they kind of hinted at there will be a manual, I mean like a an automatic go to button, but they hadn't actually said if there was or not. Probably like a rail system, but they hadn't said what hmm. they're actually going to. But they had hinted at awesome. it um, during one of the IGN interviews when they were doing it with Joe Stadium. Um, What do you guys think about the open world thing? JB, we'll do it with you first. What do you think about open world potential for this game? I definitely am, and no pun intended, open to an open world environment. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) It would, it would, it would open up a lot of opportunities to, especially in co-op, where, you know, one person can hand, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of Easter egg skulls, whatever you want to call them, thrown around. And with, with, with a bigger open world, it certainly gives them potential to add a lot, a lot of different Easter eggs throughout the maps in single player, which they're pretty famous for. And that yeah. Would, I mean, if it wasn't for, uh, Logan Payne helping me out with Halo 3, I wouldn't have found most of the skulls that I had. So they make the that a little more challenging. <laughs> well, what happened? I was going to say, the skulls are for people with way too much time that they want to just cover every single inch of everything. <laughs> well, I'm sorry that I want to cover every single inch. <laughs> no, I understand. I did the same thing, so. I actually uh, found the skulls for myself personally. I just uh, either had somebody show me or I looked it up. I didn't actually go looking. So. But um, uh, <laughs> one last thing I'd like to say before we move on to the pricing of of ODST, there was a thing during the um, in the trailer where it says "Remember Reach" and it's on there for a yeah. split second. Can uh, yeah. does anybody want to speculate on what you think that ODST might be hinting at something from Reach about? Uh, uh, you think maybe some of the old gameplay, but you got it's a flashback. We may see a little bit of glimpse of Reach. What do you guys think? Well, I mean, I'm just assuming it's it's letting you know that there will be something. You know, obviously there was a a uh, Halo Reach title announced for the future. So I'm assuming it, it would have something to do with that. Okay, okay. Dustin, what do you think about that? You got any other speculation? Uh, that's pretty much what I'm thinking is it's, it's probably going to have something to do with the new title that they released for, for Halo Reach. Um, yeah, so that I'm assuming that Reach was before that actually happened. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, remember Reach? You can't remember something that happened before. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Reach. I mean, Reach was the <laughs> the big event that happened right before Halo yes. One came Halo out. Halo One. Halo, yep. So that that was kind of the, like the whole beginning of the Halo video game franchise. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Dust Storm. Uh, you you've 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 read the book in detail, right? Reach. 
Uh, yeah. Do you remember that Spartan at, at the end of the? Um... Oh wait, hold on. We're not even reach yet. We'll talk about that later. Uh, <laughs> let's go to the pricing of ODST. Let's finish this out with the pricing. JVB has like already has already <laughs> said something about that he's not really enjoying it too much. Uh, I'll I'll go here and run down the specs. Uh, it will ship with two discs and a full retail, you know, like cover and whatnot. And, you know, one disc for the campaign and firefight. Mostly all the ODST stuff. Another one will be for the full multiplayer experience with all the maps. Uh, I'm gonna guess every, every, all 24 maps from what it had said, uh, and with 21 that we have now, and then three more that will, yeah. that will be yeah. coming out. Um, uh, some people said that they don't want to pay 60 bucks, but, you know, they probably will. And, uh, Bungie's trying to make it worthwhile by doing that and having a, Beta for Halo Reach, uh, JVB. You already talked about this before. What do you think about the price? It, it, is it justice, or are we just paying it because it's a you know it's a Halo, and they know we'll pay? And that's exactly what it is. So they're gonna they're gonna add the beta code, and of course we we remember Crackdown. Oh yes, great game. Crackdown sold, and I'm glad that Crackdown was a good game and people enjoyed it. Not that LDST is not gonna be good, but you're pretty much giving people uh, no choice because, of course, you you know there's so many millions of fans for the Halo series, and you're gonna throw you're gonna hang a carrot in front of them and have them face it. You know, <laughs> until Halo Reach comes out. So you're gonna dangle this beta code, and we're gonna fall for it, and we're gonna buy it. And for an add-on, I mean, look at what they did with GTA. They made a totally unique story. With uh, and I keep thinking of Sons of Liberty. Um, they charge twenty bucks, and it was downloadable. There's mm. no reason why. ODST uh, should be so much. Yes. Yeah, I I really find it hard. I can't justify it. I mean, yes, it's gonna come with maps. Okay, cool. But, we already have most of them. Yeah, exactly. You know, I pay for the same things. <laughs> <laughs> so you're buying the maps twice. More yeah, I'm buying the map twice, and then I'm mainly buying it because I definitely want to get my hands on the beta. Yeah, the the uh, that that that'd be something interesting to see. Uh, I I will admit I bought Crackdown because of the beta. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I will admit that, and then I played Crackdown uh, with with. Well, my good buddy's Brent Gamer, and we played the uh, thing for hours. Brent, uh, <laughs> ODST, yeah. back, Crackdown it was not disappoint, and uh, I would have I assumed ODST went out either. ODST just looks cool, and I'm, I'm a Halo junkie. So, uh, what do you think about the uh, the controller? The difference is you got a full game from Crackdown. Yeah. Well, um, ODST might be a. That's what I'm hoping. That is a. Total, it's I mean, supposed to be. I think they said ten hour gameplay. Whoa. And firefight. <laughs> Firefight's pretty. Dang. Uh, yeah, ten, ten that's hours. Almost, that's almost like a full game. Well, I beat Pretty Halo close. in about six hours, so. Yeah, I got a midnight madness six hours. Yeah, so, so. Well, I, I hope it's not all just running from one side to another. Let's hope that it's actually, you know, playing uh, for that ten hours. Um, Lady Luck, what, what do you think about the price? I'm. I'm pretty much with JVB about it. I mean, it. This is one of the instances where you see that they are taking advantage of the franchise because there's so many fans that they will buy it just because it's Halo. I mean, look at Halo Wars. Half the people probably weren't very aware of playing an RTS on a console, but it had Halo on it and they sold, you know, over a million copies. And this, I think, is to an extent going to be like that, is people buy it not really thinking that, well, now I'm going to, you know, spend extra money for maps that I already have. And the beta for me is cool. I mean, as you guys said, the, the universe and the story potential, potential for the game is so immense that I will buy it to play through the campaign and know what happens. <laughs> but it's still, I mean, full real, retail price, I think I might wait a bit before I pick it up. I mean, if uh, if anybody, I, don't, I think JVB is part of it on the expert zone. They'll, uh, are you part of the expert zone still, JVB, on Microsoft? Not really sure. I mean, I'm still going to be pissed. I have no idea. Anyway, uh, on the expert yeah. expert the zone. Expert zone. Yeah. I don't know, I don't know if Sorry, if Dusty, I don't know if I've showed you about it, but they'll they'll be having it for ten bucks when it when it releases. So if you guys want to want to give that a shout or look at, maybe I can show you guys to do that after the show. Um, awesome. Okay. Um, 
would would you guys pay hundred dollars for this controller in this game? I, I I can't think of anybody who's over the age of fourteen and makes under uh, parents that make under a hundred grand that would pay hundred bucks for this. Uh, I'm not. I'm, I'm not buying into the the controller. I. I... I am a wired controller person. I hate wireless. Um, mm-hmm. I like the weight of the wired one better, and I yeah, play a lot better with a wired controller. So, and okay. it, even yeah, it, this, despite the fact that they said there were going to be hints on the controller that would uh, hint to stuff in Halo Reach, I, I really don't think it's going to make that big of a difference. Um, maybe to all the Halo fans out there that collect everything. I could, I could, I could see them getting it, but for me, I'm just gonna stick with with my original wired controller. The old oldie but goodie. Yeah. All right, guys, yeah. we're, gonna, we're gonna finish that off with ODST. Um, looks like a good game. Will be coming out uh, the 22nd of September. Is that correct? I believe. I, I didn't yes. write down. I didn't write down the date, but I believe that's the date. Although um, when I pre-ordered it from GameStop, they still had it listed as September 1st, and yeah. now it was like. A few they, days ago. They know you're on pod tech, So. so. <laughs> <laughs> that makes all the difference. I think exactly. it was. Exactly. I was listening to, um, oh boy, somebody today. Uh, it might have actually been the Structoid, and they were saying that they got prototype early. For okay. The, for the game being out, and uh, they, actually, they actually got it from GameStop early. I don't oh, know okay. how. I'm not sure how that worked, but I remember them talking, and they were doing a review of prototype, and I know they were, there's nobody they recorded it before. <laughs> The game came anyway. Um, next up, we're gonna go to the Halo Reach. Uh, this was okay, we, we had Natal announced, we had Mag, we had Knights of the Old Republic. Okay, all that was good. Uh, okay, the, the Old Republic. The old. My my bad. Sorry, Mandy. Thank you for <laughs> most amazing trailer ever. I, I, I would I would kind of agree, but uh, uh, this was That's my, the, so the game can this, match that trailer. Oh, <laughs> if it, 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 it's the whole reason why I think I'm going to buy a new computer because of that game. But anyway, uh, we're going on the Halo Reach here. Um, for yes. me, it, it was my highlight. For, I'm not even kidding. I'm not saying it because we're on a Halo podcast. It, <laughs> like, I was just in awe of – I had no I, – I, I was dead set on Bungie never making another Halo game. And uh, just knowing that Bungie's making it has just got me excited. Uh, if it would have been anybody else, it would have been the same thing for – um, like Halo Wars, I wasn't really too excited, but you know, I figured there'd be something screwy with it. And then when I played it, there were a few things screwy with it. And I'm just, <laughs> I'm just glad that Bungie's doing this, and I'm, I'm very yeah. excited about Halo Reach. The announcement caught me off guard. I was surprised. I, I didn't want to talk to anybody about what happened at E3 until I got home and watched it. I got home from work and I watched it, and it was, I, I, I had to just pause the feed and was just like. <laughs> Well, download <laughs> download the trailer on Xbox Live and full or HD. And you can, yeah, you can yeah, see it a lot better. You can see and appreciate it a lot more. And we're gonna go here back with the announcement, the uh, the uh, official when it actually happened. I want to hear from Lady Luck first. I know she's not really all about Halo, but I mean, I, I should probably like, come rephrase it. <laughs> it. It's not that I'm not about Halo. It's oh. that the for as awesome as the online multiplayer is. It doesn't very much, so it kind of gets boring after a while, and you got to take a break and then come back again. It'll be fine. Okay. The storyline is something different. I will probably buy every Halo game at eventually. Maybe not when they come out, but eventually, so I can get the story because I have also read all except for the latest book. So I'm completely immersed in the universe. So that's good. That's good. Like I, I had been hearing rumors about. Halo Reach um, before E3, so I wasn't entirely surprised. Oh, I, I had no idea. I had, I, I really? had absolutely was, no idea. Was, I have to, I have to were, say, there were leaks all over the place about Reach. Yeah, oh, I, I, I heard see him anywhere. I heard something. I don't. I don't remember where it was, but I heard something very similar to that. But I think it was like a few months after Halo Three came out, and there was all the buzz. Is like, is this really over? And I saw some. Yeah. This could have been Bungie.net, but it's like there there was a strong possibility that Bungie was not over, and they were going to do a prequel. And so when they made the announcement of Reach, it's like, okay, I, I was kind of expecting. Spect- I, I had no idea. I was, I was just kind like, of expecting. Really? I I I mean, the only news 
I get is from Joystick, and um, I guess they didn't cover this or something or another. But but uh, it was a rumor, so it, I don't yeah. think it was anything official. Well, we, we, well, it, it, it was us... the only rumor that I heard that sounded like it had any value to it, so that's the one I stuck with. And well, that was, was right. Remember, I don't know if you, remember, you guys remember this, but remember they were saying there was going to be another Halo game until the new Xbox was out. Yeah, that's what I had heard as well. They said that uh, Peter Jackson was going to be working on there, and then Peter Jackson now is doing something for Ubisoft or E3 or something. He's not even... I don't even know. I don't even know what's going on with, with Peter Jackson project for Halo. Who knows? Well, maybe, it could be, maybe it could be Reach. Who knows? Dun, dun, dun. I don't know. I mean, I'm excited because it, the way that they presented the trailer, speculation... I'll say that first. Speculation leads me to believe, hopefully, that it will be the prequel and that it's set, you know, that the very basic in the book Fall of Reach right before the lead up into Halo 1. Yeah. That you get the experience of the Battle of Reach as it begins before Halo 1 and Mm. we assume runs into Halo 1. Now, you can't know because the books didn't exactly cover it and in Halo 1 you were kind of someplace else. But um, there, there's a lot of potential for what's happening there with Marines and the other Spartans and everything. So I'd really hope that that's the direction they're going to take it. This, this, this could be a take on the whole new franchise about how and the, the Ghost of Onyx, about how mm-hmm. Spartan team leaves Reach and they go to the Onyx world. And there's a whole not, there's a whole other team of Spartans that they don't even know about. Everybody they're thought, even, yeah. everybody mm-hmm. thought they, was gone. Yeah, they brought that up, didn't they? In um. In the books, they bring up stuff like that several times. So I, I'm really yeah. – there's so much potential for it, as we've said over and over again with the universe and the the potential story, that I really hope they take this and make something out of it. Well, I'm, well, I'm, I'm just really – They can't select. I'm just really <laughs> cautious about the fact – because from, from the trailer, other than the fact that they announced it was a first-person shooter – I'm not really sure what to expect gameplay wise because out, out be of the Halo. first person shoot it'll be Halo. Well, well yeah, it'll, thinking, it'll be Halo. It'll be, Halo. It'll be the the gameplay style will be probably very similar to the Halo we have now since it's uh, a first person shooter. I, well, but, what, what, you have to think about it that the the armor in Halo Two and Halo Three was new in Halo Two. That same armor was not around before Halo Two, so he'll right, be, but, of but course what else. Shoot. What is going to distinguish this game between the Halo that we know now and Halo One? And I think magnitude has got to be. It has to be magnitude. That's the only. I got a feeling that we're going to see squad play in in this game. Okay, because that that's going to. But yeah, because I I mean, the last the last thing you hear (laughs) is that he says he says. Uh, he, he he announces Spartan team, and then uh, he says Sierra, whatever his name is, we're not going. At-. He says we yeah, are not no, going. We are anywhere. not going anywhere exactly. Yeah. So that, if you well, read the book Fall of Reach, you know that there's uh, plenty of Spartans at Reach, and, yeah. and then, they, then, they, then they show a picture of uh, silhouettes with four Spartans, I believe. Each holding different weapons. I, I think there's like seen. seven Spartans. There's more than four. I'm and the poster. Sure. Yeah. yeah, there's a there's more than four. Yeah, yeah, there's okay. more than four. Uh, so that's but, that's anyway. it, to me that's showing that you're gonna either have control of each Spartan and get a perspective, uh, their perspective, or oh okay, you're gonna either, you know, each Spartan's gonna have a squad or something. That I mean, this is the opportunity for us to finally we're finally seeing gameplay in New Mendoza. Now we're gonna finally, hopefully. Finally, gets to, to see more spawns. I'm, I'm pretty. Game. I'm pretty sure. No, there's, there's. Uh, I'm pretty sure Halo Four will play like Halo One, Two, and Three. I don't think there'll be squad commands. I don't I mean it, the only. It, there's nothing used for the D-pad right now. I just think it's gonna play like Halo, but I think it's gonna be the magnitude of what's going on because Reach was the biggest, was the biggest thing to happen in the Halo, like biggest amount of like. Of quantity going on, and uh, just a, the Covenant attacking and the humans attacking back. I I think it'll it'll play like hey I don't I, don't, I, I do remember though right when Halo Three launched they were talking about how Bungie basically gobbled up all the people who worked on uh, Advanced Warfighter, mm-hmm. basically hired that entire team 
on to Bungie. I guess that they, they're the ones that did ODST or something. But uh, I remember hearing that. And, uh, really? And, uh, I mean, but I, I still think it'll play like Halo. What, what do you think, Mandy? I don't know. I mean, it, it's just too early, and there's too much, I guess, just speculation. Because it could be that you only, you know, it plays the same way in that it's, you know, FPS Halo 1 through 3 style, but that you're playing almost like co-op squad style i mean yeah. there's so many potential and so many options they have and we won't really we can't even imagine until they give us more so it's not if you remember it's not halo 4 it's halo reach, it's halo exactly. reach. so uh-huh. so yeah. they can go any direction i mean master chief was in halo Re- in reach from what I can remember uh, he was there at the very beginning wasn't there like excessively but he was <laughs> yeah, because that's when they yeah. blast it off. I think you might you might run into John. I don't think mm-hmm. he'll play as him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we definitely need to experience the new Spartans. Do you, do you guys remember um, at the end of uh, when they first announced Halo 3 and they were talking about what's next Halo, they were talking about uh, a, a third-person Halo game? Uh, well, that's... Oh, I mean, wait, no, wait, no. They, they well, announced, Halo they, they announced the first, first person. Never mind. They, they announced the first person. <laughs> anyway, sorry, but... uh. <laughs> So I, I didn't think about that. So I just read on here. They it says say that they announced it being first. Yeah. Person. So so let's so let's speculate a little bit. Let's 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 let me say something out of left field. What if what if Halo Reach wasn't a first person? What if it was a third person squad based game? I think that it would be it would play out like Superhuman Gal or Graw. I think that because after seeing the new people working on Bungie, that were most of them were from there. Mm-hmm. I mean, what kind of ingenuity do you want to see? I mean, uh, obviously, the Halo franchise needs to step <laughs> Smart the AIs. I don't... Um, <sighs> I, I, I like the core gameplay. I, I, I really... Um, I really liked the campaign play of Halo 2. I didn't, I didn't really like the campaign play of Halo 3, and I would like it so that uh, Halo 3, the story seemed to be... You know, you could kind of tell, you could kind of plan what was going to happen. And you're like, oh, great, okay. You, you knew when the flood were going to come. You could just tell. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> You knew when everything was going to happen. Yeah, I would just like to see from Halo Reach, even though it says at the start of the trailer, it says you know how it ends before you start. Yeah, yeah from the beginning. The book. Yeah. I, I think, yeah, I think that's just touching on the other games. It's like it is a prequel. But uh, yeah. I, I, I just don't want to be able to guess what's going to happen. And Halo 3, I didn't. Like the game, the gameplay seemed to be more for the multiplayer side and not for the campaign side. I would like it to be more. Of the gameplay was made for campaign, and you played the same way in multiplayer. But the gameplay was for the campaign because uh, uh, it, it just seems like the Halo Three gameplay was for multiplayer and not for the actual campaign. That's why well, they. That's that's kind of falling over everywhere though, because you can't you know, attribute it just to Halo. Everyone's become so focused on online and multiplayer that the store mode campaign arenas of the games have just kind of fallen off. And you see it more in Halo 3, I think, because everybody wanted the online so much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you think, and it uh, makes me sad. I want the damn story, people. Do, do, do you think... <laughs> kind of uh, you think uh, with Halo, Halo Three, I personally think Forge and all the com- and all the community stuff came out of left. I was not even thinking about any of that. Mm. Uh, do you guys? What do you guys? Do you guys think that the clans will come back? What else do you think that Bungie has in store for us for Reach? Anything other than like, do you think they bring Forge back? Will they bring some some new things we never even thought of back? Will they make it easier to make a machinima? What do you, What do you guys think? Well, I mean, uh, you look at Forza. Forza has an uh, even better video editor now for Forza 3 coming up. Yeah. Now, if they can use that video editor for Forza 3 and implement it into Reach, then, yeah, Machinima would be awesome. I mean, that would create a whole new community around an already strong one. Yeah. You look at the Forge community, it's huge. People are doing <laughs> some amazing, amazing things with Forge. Now add video to that. I mean, we already have photos that we can share and and we can share video but we can't edit it yeah do you think so. that um uh there'll be full map creation 
I don't think Bungie's so. ever going to release that ability. They uh, make too much money off of yep. selling yeah. maps. Yeah, I don't, I don't think Bungie's ever, ever going to get out of place. Other than the community that, that that's already been made with Halo Custom Edition, where you can already make full-fledged maps. What I would like to see in multiplayer is more variety. I, I, I would like to be a grunt. Yes. Well, the thing is, like, you, you couldn't realistically <laughs> uh, a grunt in the campaign dies in one shot from a battle rifle, and that's yeah, the- yeah. I mean, not so much a grunt. You don't like the dinosaurs. <laughs> it would look funny to see a grunt jumping up and down everywhere, but uh. At least a brute or someone, you know. Elite. Or, you know, well, yeah, elite. elite. Microsoft or, is in charge of, of. Elite is the dino. Okay. <laughs> you guys, the uh, Microsoft is in charge of the Halo IP, with with uh, Microsoft. I mean, with Sony getting a lot of hype from Mag, from Killzone Two, and just the scale of it. Do you think that they might be pushing Bungie to do scale correctly? They need to. I mean. I, you know, it's al- almost unfair to compare Killzone 2 and Halo 3 because even though Killzone 2 looks like it's a, you know, there's a, this grand scale, there are parts where it's almost rail type where you you have a uh, uh, you have point A and point B and there's only one way to get to point B. Whereas Halo you can uh at least with Halo 3, there there was some sort of there's there was a little bit of freedom there. But <laughs> if they're gonna go with this grand scale, I mean, how do they compete visually? Because now that I look at Halo Three, of course it's an older title, but when I look at it now, it's like, okay, this feels cartoony. <laughs> and then when I'm playing it, that totally changes. Well, but yeah. looking at it, I'm like, okay, it's cartoony. My, that my next Halo game, I'm hoping that it's grittier. Uh, the you know obviously they'll improve. I mean that's 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 a no given. But how are they going to improve? How much are they going to improve? Are they just going to give us the same old same old and and add in a few little lights on our armor? Or are they going <laughs> to you know really make the, the the environments? I mean Reach needs to look totally different than anything we've seen before. Did did do you think that uh would you buy it if it was the same? You know I will. <laughs> Eventually. Uh-huh. What do you? What do you? I wor- buy just for the story, but what get- what? yeah. You know what? Worst case, I'll rent it for the story. I mean, I, I enjoyed Halo Wars to a point, but if it wasn't because there was it was attached to the Halo universe, I wouldn't have played. You know, I wouldn't have put any time to it. Yeah. Uh, one one thing that's one thing that's got me kind of concerned is I see this like in a lot of sci-fi films or other prequels could come out it's like they present you with a lot better technology than what was before <laughs> well like in star wars <laughs> yeah like star wars and, well i can also kind of like in in halo wars too a little bit well if you want to if you want to think about it um in in the halo universe the humans got rocked after reach everything was going badass for the humans before reach and then after yes. reach, they got rocked so uh maybe they didn't have as much um, and, and, and I'm, I'm just pro- hoping they don't like turn the Halo universe upside down and be like, "Oh, we have these uber weapons that do massive destruction." <laughs> and, like, I, mean, you- I, I want to make, I want to see Bungie make it very well balanced and and stick to the Halo story, and not go out of the way of the books and be like, "Oh, we're just making up our own thing." Do you think mm-hmm. e- e- equipment will be back? Uh. If it is, I will be really disappointed. Um, maybe what? maybe a couple of things would would be okay, but if if you have like a mass spectrum like you see now, like the with re, if I see a regenerator or a bubble shield, I'm just gonna be like, what the heck, Bungie? <laughs> There's other stuff. Well, you just want to see it better because I mean, even if it's in a different time, different part of the timeline. I mean, that doesn't mean that they can just kind of throw together something that's exactly the same and expect people to be happy with it. Yeah. I mean, they'll buy it because it's Halo, but then a lot of people are going to get pissed off. So. I, I don't want to. I don't want Bungie to make the game just because it's a Halo title. Yeah. I mean, I, 
I really hope Bungie isn't falling into into that kind of reality. Mario. That yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> like Mario. Like just because it has the title, it's going to be good. Let's I, I make want... the same game and add four people at <laughs> once. Let's just do the same. Part. Well, you know, I mean, the reality is, it's a very popular franchise. It is, and... but I don't want to. I don't want to see. It was. It was, was kind of to, to destroy the franchise. I would say but... Halo was so good. The reason why Star Wars was was so good. Star Wars, you didn't see anything like that at all. Mm-hmm. The, when, the time, yeah. when it came out, and then when Halo came out, you didn't. There was no console shooter that played like that. Mm-hmm. It was, it was, uh, it was always complicated, and like Rainbow Six was complicated as hell. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, for your feeble mind, but but let, let me throw something <laughs> really wild out there. What's up? Because we know that Bungie broke away from Microsoft. What if by the time Halo Reach comes out, it becomes a multi-platform title. No. Uh, thinks- Microsoft owns the Halo IP. No. Bungie doesn't own the Halo uh, IP. Uh, Are you sure about that? Yes. Guaranteed. That's the only reason how an ensemble can make it. Well, what about the PC? Because you already have uh, Halo, Halo 2 on the PC. not even there. Well, uh, I mean, I would say PC... Uh, we would have to see Halo 3 before we see Reach. I, I, would, I really want to see Halo 3 on the PC, and I would like to see it cross-platform, but I've heard news that if it even comes out, there's really no easy way to make it cross-platform. So Dude, there's just no way. I don't think we would ever see Halo Three on the PC because if you wanted to do Forge and all that stuff on a PC, you you would have to have a, a, an expensive com- computer system. I think. Not really. Well, well that's uh, gonna be like. Other I mean, if you look games, at if you look at Halo customer just, just hack um, everything. Just and the H two V map, <laughs> it doesn't take too much to run that. Uh, it, it would it would just seem like they. It would take up too much stuff on the computer. I, I could. No, I think. I think if they made Halo Three for the computer and made it more open than they did for Halo Two, like make it similar to Halo Custom Edition, I think tons and tons of people would buy it. I think that uh, um, for the Halo, you, I mean, you got to remember that the IP is not owned by Bungie. Microsoft makes all the decisions, and uh, I think that they're trying to move toward the Xbox being your entertainment everything. With, oh, uh, absolutely true. That's so, uh, yeah, I, I, well, that's for sure. Then, Especially with the but... now Twitter and Facebook announcements. So, so let me let me let me do another crazy. Uh, let me throw another crazy idea. What's up? With the announcement of Perfect Dark hitting Xbox Live Arcade, can we see a potential Halo One remake on Xbox Live Arcade? Um. We you can you can download the title through the through the old. No, but I'm talking about revamped with multiplayer. Mm. Same way with Perfect Dark. I would have to. I don't know what the file size for Halo One is. Um, if I the think... file size would fit, then um, I could see it happening. I wouldn't buy it. Well, but, uh, down the line, we're gonna have game uh, streaming games. I was yep. gonna say if if it's exactly Halo One and they just add in multiplayer, I would buy it. Would that that would people? So so let's say this scenario happens with people jump to Halo 1 and totally forget about the other sequels? Um, possibly. I, I, I think I think the people who are on Halo 3 are sticking to it. There's a lot of haters about Halo 3, and I think it's... Oh, yeah, there's a lot, yeah. I think it's just because they, they suck at it, and that's got to be the... I think, I think <laughs> if a Halo that's, 1 multiplayer comes be it. out, there's going to be a good user, a uh, good player base that will move over, but I don't think... It's going to be totally lost to Halo 1. I think still a lot of people will play Halo 3. And it, 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 think, it would be cool, but I don't think it'll happen. Well, I think that just so many people came in on Halo 2 and Halo 3 that they don't really know the goodness that was Halo 1. Yep. <laughs> so it'll it, it'll have that, you know, player base, but there's just too many people that came in, you know, later in the franchise they really won't care, and you'll see that the majority, not all, but the majority of people that would pick it up would probably be people that started on Halo 1. I, I, but you yeah. know what? It, it, word of mouth goes a long way, and if, you know, we can't deny that that core that started on Halo That's why I bought an Xbox. Is, you know, it's enormous. I mean, it's, That's it's why a someone... holding block. And so <laughs> there's no way if Halo 1 came out and I mean, it, it would just generate so much buzz all over the place that, out of curiosity, 
same people that have grown uh, into the Halo universe from Halo 2 to and 3 would, out of curiosity, they would automatically jump to Halo. Well, let's say this. Uh, I know, I know Podtacular as a, as a, let's say as a, as a company, as an organizational size, would probably love to see that, but, um, because it yeah. would definitely yeah. get people on the site. But, uh, as a host and as a gamer, um, I think that we need to move on and, yeah, Halo One happened. I mean, it, would it would it would it would it be cool? Would they make money? Possibly, yes. Would I play it? Would I like to see it? I personally liked Halo One for the campaign. I did not like the multiplayer. Xbox Connect was horrible. Oh yeah, I, I hated playing that. <laughs> um, and it, I think that 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 ruined my Halo One multiplayer experience for forever. Um, I suck at Halo you never One. Played Land though. I mean, Land was. Oh, see, yeah, that's, that, that, that's one thing because like. We had actually uh, two years ago. We had a a Halo One tourney here at at university I go to, and a lot of people really got into that. And we have uh, like two land parties, and sometimes Halo One pops up. So, <laughs> and, cool. and as far as storyline goes, I think Halo One has the best storyline out of all three games. Mm, that was back before they cared about online multiplayer. Yeah. <laughs> they were just well, trying the, to get the game, easy playing. Shoot. The game was just really in in depth, and I thought it was laid out really well. Halo Two was just frustrating as heck, and then Halo Three was very predictable, and it seemed short. Yeah, yeah. Halo Three was. Halo better. One was definitely the best story that they had. I mm-hmm. I, I hated the library. Just for the fact. Just for <laughs> Me too, dude. Okay, no. That was I the first co-op. level, especially on like on legendary to play. Oh my god. It was. No, no. I co-opted with my dad, and his <laughs> favorite level was the library. So that's oh. the one he always wanted to play. Jeez, oh, nice. I like I two hours to beat it on legendary. Exactly. Dang. That's what we played it on. It was horrible. Yeah, it's just. <laughs> I, I, I'll... The and memories. Hey, I mean, it would be cool to see. I, I would probably be inclined because you know, as being a host down here, I would probably buy it and play it. But um, I man, you'd be all over it. I don't see you'd be, that. You'd, you'd be crying and everything. I think, I think a lot of people who enjoyed <laughs> he knew, he knew <laughs> a lot so of well enjoyed the Halo One multiplayer would go back and play it. I, I don't think, think you. It, it, it's. It, I just think that the Halo One was so much harder. And it takes more skill than Halo Three because it, exactly Bungie, I, I believe they didn't say it, but they pretty much said it that they made Halo Three easier for people to play. You know, that's why they so made the people could get but, into it. But yeah, that's why a lot of people it, wouldn't like Halo One. And Call of Duty is the easiest freaking game I've ever played in my life on multiplayer, and I think that's why it's so big. Because I mean, you can't yeah, you for a challenge. Up play. Call of Duty is so easy. Yeah, I mean, the the there were I, I'll never forget the the, the night. Halo 2 came out, and I got finally got home from waiting online uh, at my local GameStop. I go on. We're all together. Everybody's freaking like, so excited. We're all playing matches. And just the amount of people saying, why can I not kill this guy? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm looking at them, and they're just holding down dual SMGs, and you see it gradually going up. Yeah. And I'm like, idiot, tap on the buttons. Tap on the triggers. Tap on the triggers. And- <laughs> Even, I mean, you know, it was common sense because you, you kind of remember that from the first one. Yes. And, you know, it's just an indication that, you know, like Mandy was saying, some people just started on Halo 2, and it was really frustrating for them. But, uh, that is a, that is a uh, we kind of took a different take here, but uh, <laughs> that would be oh, good. cool. But, oh, yeah, good. Let's, let's end off yeah. Reach real quick good with... Uh, what do you want to see from Region? Do you want to see it do well, or do you want to see Bungie move on? Duststorm, let's have you go first. I'm a big Halo fan. I will always be a big Halo fan. Um, the only concern I have is is how much more you can pull out. I mean, if, if Bungie has things under their sleeve that's going to make the Halo franchise a lot better, then I'm all for more games. Um, what I would like to see in Reach... Um, as as far as gameplay goes, see a little bit different style than what we've seen with the existing Halo games. Um, see a little a little bit different play style. Um, 
that kind of stuff. So okay, all right, all right. And uh, Lady Luck, what would you like to see? Um, I want to see a more developed story. They have so much potential, and I feel like they've become so focused on the online and multiplayer aspects that they've kind of just thrown together a campaign to keep people happy. And then, you know, I'm kind of the same that I want to see them coming out with new new stuff because there's so much potential to the universe. Um, Because if they're just going to keep throwing the same things at us, then, you know, then it's going to be like, okay, whatever, it it isn't worth my time. One more thing is I want to see it. Stay, stick to the storyline that they have established in the books. Okay, yeah, I got you. Nothing, nothing, no surprises. Well, I mean, like, in the games, they didn't address any of the extra Spartans where, I mean, they could have at least... Hinted. They thought they were gone. No, I mean, they're, they're still... I mean, te- still technically, alive. by the books, there's still mm-hmm. other Spartan 2s during yeah. Halo. As far as I understand, though, everybody except for Ani assumes that they're all dead. Well, they assume they are, but I mean, I, I'm not saying that they have to follow the exact storyline. But you know, I don't want them to suddenly be like, "Oh, let's find another alien race to try and kill everyone." You know? <laughs> I mean, it's okay if they I mean, don't like address it all, but I don't want to see them stray too far away from it. Will you see brutes and and reach? Yeah, I would. I That's, would assume. I think that would be good. Yeah. Okay. They were an onyx, so. But I don't I think. Mean, yeah, I don't want to see the Halsey took took one of the Spartans. There's a female, I forgot, she was a sniper. Kelly! Kelly, yeah, there you go. Do you see um, Halo continuing after this and uh, continuing on with the books and maybe going to Onyx, maybe going to a few other things? Well, this is what I want out of the Halo universe from now on. I want something gritty. I want more. I want a story that's going to shock the player. (laughs) I don't want... You we know, know how it ends because we want, play Halo 3. Yeah, absolutely. We know how it ends. They class it. But I want something shocking. Like, I mean, that, that's, that's the only downfall I'm seeing to Reach is that we know the story. So, obviously, they couldn't tell everything in the Master novel. Master Chief's gay. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> 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 he, he's a I mean, there's, there's, there's also still a cliffhanger at the end of Halo 3, which yeah. just, it just dawned on me, but that might have some time some tie into Onyx. But. Okay, well, you you, you gotta you gotta you gotta kind of remember that um if um there is no way if the flood are on every ring that the flood's done with. And I uh, hope so. The flood are creepy. And and there is no way that all of the prophets are dead because there's a home world of the prophets. There's a home world of the brutes. I don't think I think they may have finished the fight. Uh, they finished the story arc with with John, so obviously yeah. we see we might see John in another movie. I mean, uh, film. I mean, game. 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 There we go. <laughs> there we go. Because, because I mean, obviously they were heading to a planet, and everybody assumes that's Marathon. Will he take a Scott Mitchell thing from like End War? He'll be more the uh, guy giving orders. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. I mean, that that's the other part that worries me is that so so many people got. Grew, uh, they they loved John and they loved Cortana, and none of them are going to be in these titles. So, how well do they develop new characters that we're going to grow attached to? I think I, that uh, I was sad when Sergeant Johnson died. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I would um I I would I would think that they're going to do an all right job. I think that they're going to keep Reach like they kept Halo One. Halo One stayed. The, the story wasn't broad. It was on. Halo, and I think Reach isn't going to be too broad. It's going to—they weren't—they're not going to fly off to a Halo ring world. They're not going to fly off to Onyx. I think they'll strictly stay on Reach, and you'll fight that out. And, Battle uh, for Reach. And uh, I hope that's what they do. And, and that—that's that's, what, that's how you get to learn Master Chief and Cortana so well. You—you you, you learn the characters through Halo One and Halo Two. You kind of just—you already knew what they were about. It just—you mm-hmm. saw what they did in Halo Three. It was more about, you know. What they did in Master Chief trying to find her and all, oh, oh, oh. but you know now now, now in, in in Reach the fall of Reach the book, we learned that the Spartans, uh, you know, they cloned them whenever they kidnapped them, they cloned the kids, and the kids would die early, and they assumed there was some kind of virus or something. Yeah. Yeah, there's Looked different fog. kind of like terminal diseases or something. 
So maybe they go into a backstory of the entire Spartan program. Maybe. Where it came from, how it was developed. Maybe we see John as a kid. Those clones were only meant to, like, take back to the parents. They weren't, from from what I understood from the books, is that they were designed to replace the actual person. Yeah. To mimic that they never left. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But, they were. I think they called they them like flash clones. Yeah, yeah and so. like, like somehow the the clone Uh-oh. procedures weren't I can see, very. I can see Halo, uh, True Life Halo. I'm trying to find my <laughs> True Life is Halo. <laughs> real mother, <laughs> Master Chief. <laughs> it's real pain. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, give me a weapon. Ah. <laughs> uh, uh. uh, no, uh, sorry to cut everybody off, but the one thing I want to see from. I like to write. Um, I, I've been writing. I wrote, I wrote for Talking About Games before it was Talking About Games. I, mm-hmm. I've been writing for Podtacular for a long time. I, I even wrote on Gamertag Radio once or twice. And um, yeah. di- different hey, websites. Hey, don't forget Xbox Circle. Oh, Xbox. Oh, man. Xbox Circle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I try. Freaks. Yeah. Oh, man. This is way back in the day. Tag. Oh, <laughs> the, the list is endless. I'm just kidding. Um, Where I go, you go. <laughs> <laughs> we're, uh, we're for um Mini me. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. For um I like to write. And the one thing that I I think Halo three had bad dialogue when she says where should they go and she cocks the gun and says to war. I was like, Oh I, that was the last thing I was that, uh, that was cheesy. It was very cliche. Yeah, it was yeah. I wanna yeah. see better writing. I wanna make it more believable that I'm playing a video game rather than playing a kid's game. And uh it's you Miranda know, Miranda Keys in, in Halo Three was was not as good as the Miranda Keys in Halo Two. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I would just say the whole the the only person who had good dialogue was Lord Hood, even though he was kind of a lack of. He was an word. ass. He was a poon tank. No, but a, I mean, he he, he and, represents. Uh, he he seemed very typical of what a person in that position today would would yeah. be like. I mean, I think. He had good he dialogue. Captured, he captured pretty much the essence of the Marine. The four star general. John, John yeah. had bad dialogue. The the I would say Truth had a good dialogue and I would say that um Johnson was pretty good. Johnson I mean I mean uh I would just say that the writing of the flood coming in at the two worst opportune times that was just oh my god. It was just like oh, great. You know, you you could see it happening, you know, like this is this is the one time. Okay, let's let's go get him. Let's go in. Well, the, it wasn't the, really the innovative. Thing. Where like no. in in Halo, Halo One, it's just you you pop right in there. In Halo Two, it it slowly sneaks in. I want to see some good cutscenes. But, but it's it's not like they do a bad yeah. job of, of bringing it in there. They bring it in just just enough to where it, it fits in with the story really well. With Halo Three, it's just like bam. It's like oh, oh great, here's the flood. I don't want to do. Like, Bungie is the premier franchise. I mean, uh, Halo 3, uh, it, it may be in all of gaming, you could say. You, you got God of War. I think Halo may be the premier franchise. And uh, whatever they slack on in any kind of of area, people, it's, it's going to be, you know, that's, that's what we're going to be talking about. We won't be focusing on what's good about it. We're talking about what's, what's bad about it. So I, I don't think Bungie can, by announcing that they're continuing on, they can lack anywhere. I, I think this game has been Well, you know what? I mean, it's in. no secret it's no secret that Bungie is trying to create new IPs. They want to they want to create something new and you know, in the, I'm sure on the back of their minds they're sort of tired of doing Halo related titles and they want to be known for something more. So I'm just afraid that they're going to get lazy with this title. Mm. And, yeah. and, and give us and give us something that's not uh that's not uh Full of their potential. Uh, no, no, I think they get... can they can make some changes too that that aren't necessarily need... restrictive of what to. Halo is right now. So mm-hmm. they absolutely need to. Before we Just go, I want to ask one last question. Could you see Halo Reach being the best Xbox platform game ever? B- bigger than Mass Effect? Bigger than? Do you think Bungie can pull out all the stops and really? Show what they can do in Halo Reach. You, 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 I think that Bungie's got something out for all the haters out there, and uh, either A gonna gonna give in to the mainstream, or B they're just gonna make the best game we've ever seen. 
it's going to blow everybody away. What do you guys think? Do you guys think it has the potential to be the, one, one of the best games ever? Uh, oh, I think, man, that's a tough one. I think with the market, it has the potential to take the stage, but with they're going to have to do some pretty amazing stuff and do stuff that's different than what Halo is right now to really make a difference, at least in my opinion. Yeah, because, mm-hmm. I mean, th- the thing is, is we tend to to genericize that the platform game or whatever tends to be a new IP. It's not normally a sequel because then you have to compete with everything else that was before it in the same title. So they have potential to create a great name or like, you know, a great, a great game that will be kind of like Halo 3 that people will go out and buy the system for. But I don't think that it's going to reach the same level as we've seen other games. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I think if if they really want to want to please the fan base and really expand the universe, they can. But if they're, if they slack off at anything, it's, I see it only just as another mediocre game. Okay. Well, All right. well, that's the thing, you know. Can can you know? I, it's funny because um, Paris from Uncle Gamer and uh, <laughs> me, me, uh, Chris Paladino, we joke about uh, how me, me and Paladino are cranky. You know, we joke around saying we're cranky old gamers that we're the <laughs> old, we're the two cranky old guys and the Muppets, Waldorf, and uh, the other guy. <laughs> so. It, I don't know if it's just that I've been doing this for so long and nothing surprises me anymore. And like, for example, with the whole NATO thing, I, I I am intrigued by the technology, and I don't mean to go off topic, but I wasn't excited because you know what? It's not coming out yet. It's it, not if, coming out anytime soon. If so, you saw the the Island movie, um, there's a thing in there where they're fighting, mm-hmm. and uh, it's all it all says Xbox 360 around it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Mm-hmm. And uh, you kind of see something like that, and that's the first thing I thought about when I saw the tall work. They've been thinking about this the entire time, haven't they? But anyway, keep going. Uh, see what you think. But but like I was saying, you know, with with Reach, you know, it really needs to. If it's going to impress me, and I'm not saying that I speak for everybody, if it's going to impress me. And and, uh, and don't get me wrong, I used you know me and Fumo were the hosts of, of Potacular way back, <laughs> so I love Halo. But I need to be impressed now. With, with this new IP. I mean, it's really not a new IP, but it, it has potential to totally take uh, uh, the story and, and make it, un, you know, create new content out of the story and, and bring something fresh and different. And that's going to be hard because Halo is always going to be tied in with Master Chief. And whether we, we, you know, whether they introduce new Spartans and, and, and we grow to, to attach with these people, it's going to be a big challenge. And they got to bring, like I keep saying, they got to bring innovation to the table. And I, you know, they, I mean, look at, look at, uh, what they did with Halo 3 with the videos, the picture sharing, and, uh, of course, of course, Forge. So they can bring something good. I just hope it's good enough by the time it comes out. Mm-hmm. I get there, you. There's great competition out there now. All right, guys. I'm going to have to see something really, really, good come out of it for me to, to be really interested. Mm-hmm. And of course I'll be interested in the story. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I could, rent, I could rent it and, you know, get an idea what the story is about. It's, it's, I, I don't want to rent it. I want it to be awesome. Yes. It's it's how much can you hook the player in to the story. Mm-hmm. That, that's, that's my catch right now. Well, I think I think you can really... In the, in the Peter Molyneux here. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Halo. Halo is my game. I grew up on Halo. That's pretty much the only game I play. So, when it comes to mm-hmm. Halo, I'm I'm all expect, yeah. expecting great things out of it. Love it. Even wow. though my multiplayer experience right now isn't that great, but hey, you're you're a ten but, in MLG now, man. You're up, hey, you're up yeah, there. yes, <laughs> skills getting up there. <laughs> well, anyway, um, um, before we get too much engulfed. In non E three <laughs> stuff, maybe we Oops. could have we, we we could invite JVB and Mandy on for another show sometime soon and uh, talk more talk more Halo potential. But um, well, JVB will will be on hopefully for the fourth anniversary episode. Oh, just let me know ahead of time. Let me know. Popping. 
It should be do that. Should, should be, should be in like, July. Should be in nine weeks, right? About yeah. About nine weeks. Oh. Um, oh. Tales to come. Two hundredth episode, JVB. What, what do you think about that? Yeah, man. <laughs> Doing big things. What did you think when when you guys ended the podcast? <laughs> what we what did we think of uh, would happen to the show overall? Yeah, Dusty, Dusty, can we? <laughs> can you throw an edit in here? Can we? Um, yeah, it was more of a joke question. Oh, okay, okay, but I mean, um, it was we could ask we could ask them that on the two hundredth episode. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. that, it was yeah, more right. of a It was more of a rhetorical question. <laughs> can I? Are you okay? I, I just I just wanted to just make sure that I don't want to go on some big ass tangent because we got it. <laughs> I'm I'm pretty sure that we're holding up these two guys. We're hitting an hour and thirty minutes right now. Yeah, we and this is gonna be a bitch to record to get down to twenty minutes. So no, oh, no since it, since it was gonna be a, a, its own special, I'm gonna make a different special. Put another. I'm gonna put like a twenty minute blurb like you did for MLG in here. Are you sure that you okay? If you want me to yeah. do it, just a minute. Okay. no, I'm gonna All do it. Okay, we'll talk as long as you guys want. I don't get it in nothing. Keep going. Uh, <laughs> With that being said, um, let's talk about um, the new Mass Effect 2 coming up next. I wanted to see what you guys thought. Well, uh, 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 yeah, one, right. So, yeah, uh, I think that's going to wrap up the E3 for for this special. Uh, I want to thank JVB and Lady Luck again thank for coming on. Yeah, Lady thank you. For having thank us. you Thank you guys for uh, giving us a different perspective of the Halo universe. JBB being the uh, cranky geezer and <laughs> hey, look, being there. It's, it's, um, it's, a, it's, it's a big thing hearing about actual first-hand experience. Yeah, yeah definitely. She, she's, definitely she's, got, she's got more patient waiting for an hour and a half than I do. <laughs> I had nothing better to do. <laughs> it was really bad. No, seriously, for like the first 30 minutes, I was like looking at the line. I'm like, crap. I'm the only girl in the line. What does that <laughs> say about me? Nerd! <laughs> yeah. Were there people hitting on you at joke, the E3 joke. event? To be honest. There were a couple people, but, you know, most of the time we were busy doing stuff, so. Yeah. Was was one of them Carlos Farrell? Ah! <laughs> you had to like bring that, that up. He sounded like... <laughs> During that, during that interview, he sounded... Was he really? He sounded like you. That's that the first thing I got when he was... On That's, the uh, the the one from Game Narp? Yeah, isn't he the yeah. one? Yeah, he's he's dumb, right? Yeah, yeah. He, 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 yeah. Dumb, he kept saying like "sweetheart" and "I'm glad yeah. I met you," and I was like, "What the <laughs> hell is this guy saying?" <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, he was straight up about it. It was. Yep. He didn't hide anything. <laughs> Did he like want your number or something afterwards? That'd be funny. No. What was, great, what was great was when you know me and him are talking and. And uh, Mandy shows up, and and the thing of me and Godfrey were like next to each other. And he like we're talking. All of a sudden, he stops talking. And goes, "Who's that?" <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, uh, also, from that interview, it was funny when he was talking about how he said alcohol was a big deal to him. That yeah. it's like, yeah. it was really important. I was like, "Come on, man! You can't be saying that on on air." <laughs> <laughs> No, he, he's he's a funny dude. He's cool though, real cool. Yeah, he sounds like it. <laughs> anyway, um, do you want to officially wrap it up real quick, Dustin? Yeah. Um, thanks again for listening in, guys, to our special E3 coverage of the Halo announcements. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. So, yep. I hate it.